Hi guys, my name is Elise and welcome back to another week with the Foundry Kids and welcome to the second week of our November series called Stand. This month we are talking about being brave and being courageous and being able to stand strong because we know that God is always, always with us. And that is what we are talking about today. We are talking about another time in the Bible when someone had to be brave and stand strong because they knew that God was with them. So before we learn more about our Bible story today, we're going to stand up and sing a song. Today, our Bible story comes from the Old Testament. It comes from the book of 1 Samuel. And in this story, we are going to be learning about a guy named David. Now, you might have heard of David before, and we are going to be talking about what I think is one of his most famous stories. We are talking about David and Goliath. Now, David had to be brave when he was up against Goliath because Goliath was what? Goliath was a giant. Yes, we are talking about giants two weeks in a row. Did you know there are giants in the Bible? There's more than two in the Bible. You should definitely read your Bible and check it out. But David was just a regular old guy and he had to fight a giant. So let's find out about how David was brave. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the ninth book of the Old Testament, 1 Samuel. God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. God delivered them from slavery and led them through the desert to freedom in the land of Canaan. But the Israelites were like a yo-yo. They'd run to God and turn away from God. Run to God, turn away from God. Instead of trusting God to lead them, they begged for a king like the nations around them. And God gave them a king, Saul. But Saul turned his back on what God wanted too. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, Erica. Hey, everyone. At this time, one of the ways God spoke to the people was through a priest. The high priest Samuel had loved and listened to God since he was a young boy. And he was deeply saddened when he saw that King Saul was ignoring God. But God spoke to Samuel. I am sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. So 
Samuel was in a tricky position. Saul could have Samuel killed for anointing a new king, but Samuel chose to be brave and do exactly as God had told him. Samuel traveled to Bethlehem where Jesse lived with his sons. The first son, Eliab, was tall and handsome and definitely looked like king material. And Samuel thought to himself, Oh, this has to be the one the Lord wants me to anoint for him. But God had something super important to say to Samuel. Do not consider how handsome or tall he is. I have not chosen him. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what's in his heart. Jesse had six other sons stand right in front of Samuel, but even though they looked pretty kingly, God made it clear to Samuel. Hmm. Well, God hasn't chosen them either. Are these the only sons you have? Well, my, uh, my youngest son is taking care of the sheep. Oh, well, okay, uh, send for him. So of course, Jesse sent for his youngest son, David. And when David showed up, well, <laughs> he looked and smelled like he'd been hanging out with, well, a bunch of sheep. But God was looking at David's heart instead of his haircut. He told Samuel, Get up and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel poured oil on David's head, a special sign that God had chosen him to be the next king of Israel. Okay, now, just to be clear, David was not king yet. In fact, Saul didn't even know there was a new king waiting in the wings. He was busy leading the nation and later trying to fight off a Philistine invasion. And the Philistines had a secret weapon, a warrior more than nine feet tall named Goliath. Choose one of your men. Have him come face me to decide this war. I dare you. Obviously, the Israelites were terrified. For 40 days in a row, they cowered behind the battle line as Goliath repeated his dare. Now, David's brothers were part of Saul's army. And after all this time, their dad wanted to make sure they were okay. So Jesse told David, to leave the sheep behind and take some food to his brothers. David arrived just in time to hear Goliath's challenge. Come and fight me, I dare you. Right away, David turned the men around him. He's bringing shame on Israel and trash talking God. Someone has to fight him. Word got back to King Saul that this kid was asking about Goliath. So Saul sent for David. Don't let anyone lose hope because of this Philistine. I'll go out and fight him. You're too young. When I'm taking care of my father's sheep, sometimes a wild animal attacks. I go after it to save the sheep. I've killed a lion and a bear. God saved me from them, and he'll save me from this Philistine. Go. May the Lord be with you. At first, Saul wanted David to wear his own armor. <sighs> but it was super heavy, and David wasn't used to it. So David shrugged it off and went and found five smooth stones from the stream instead. Come and fight me! This time, when Goliath made his challenge, David stepped forward. The warrior mocked him. <laughs> Come over here. I'll feed you to the wild animals. <laughs> you come against me with a sword, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. He'll give me victory over you. As Goliath moved to attack, David raced forward. He took one of those stones, fit it in his sling, and spun it with all his might. The stone <laughs> sliced through the air and hit Goliath squirrely in the head. Ow. The giant swayed and fell to the ground, dead. When the Philistines saw their hero was dead, they panicked and ran. The Israelites chased them until their whole army scattered. And Saul was so impressed with David, he invited him to come and live at the palace. The end. That story gives me the chills, no matter how many times I hear it. I mean, how did David have the guts to do that? Well, David had gotten in the habit of talking to God every day and asking for God's help to 
protect the sheep. So when he came up against something that seemed impossible... He had practice. He was ready. So what's our part in the story? Now, I don't think any of us will meet a nine-foot-tall giant soon, but you probably are going to face something that feels big and impossible. Maybe someone you know is sick. You're super nervous about visiting them, but you can encourage them and show them God's love, even when things feel dark. Or maybe your giant is PE. I have a friend who hates running. She was gonna pretend to be sick on the day she had to run a mile in PE. What happened? Well, we talked to God about it together, and she got out there and ran. Wow. Yep. You don't have to do the impossible alone. Jesus went up against the biggest, scariest thing of all, death, and he defeated it. God raised Jesus from the dead. And when we believe in Jesus, we get to face our fears with the very same power that raised Jesus back to life. All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye, Bye Erica. David was able to do something that seemed impossible, but it wasn't David doing it by himself. Mm -mm. God was with David and he knew that. That's why he was able to stand strong and be brave because he knew he was doing something that God wanted him to do. And he knew that God was right there by his side the whole time. And that's why our memory verse this month is Joshua chapter one, verse nine. And it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's our memory verse for this month, and I think it goes really, really well with our lesson today because David wasn't afraid because God was with him. So how can you be brave this week and know that God is with you? I can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye!